In this section, we're gonna talk about a, a smaller idea. It, it's not as big or ex, as exciting as optimization, but it's a neat little trick. And it's a way to make working with uh, not so nice functions just a little bit nicer. So what we're doing is we're using this idea of linear approximation. And linear approximation relies on this main idea. It says if we zoom in to a differentiable function a lot, the curve of the function is not that far off from the tangent line at a point. So I'm actually going to switch over to a graph of a function. So here I actually have two functions. It's hard to see, isn't it? It's because I'm so close. If I was to zoom out a little bit, Oh, all of a sudden it becomes very clear. I see the red function, that's y equals x squared. The blue function, that's y equals 2x. In other words, that's the tangent line to y equals x squared at x equals 1. But the idea here is if I zoom in to the point where the tangent line intersects the fun function, if I get very, very close, and very close is say within one decimal point. If the closer I get, the closer that the tangent line and the function are. They get very, very close to each other. So in order for this approximation to work, I have to pick numbers that are very close to this point of intersection. If I look at the graph, if I go farther away, if I'm talking about like over here at x equals zero, well there's this big distance right here between uh, zero and, or excuse me, between y equals x squared and between my tangent line. The y values there are not all that close. One is zero, one is negative one. You're a whole unit off, which is not terribly close. So, we need to be very close in order for our approximation to be accurate. And this is only going to work for differentiable or in air quotes, nice functions. It won't work for corners or cusps, certainly not asymptotes. So if I were to draw a function that had a cusp, it would look something like this. And let's say I sketched in the tangent line right here. So there's my tangent line, and I want to use that to approximate, say, this x value right here. It's, it's perhaps not that far off, but look at how far apart my function and the tangent line are. They're not very close at all you start to have more and more problems the closer and closer you get to that cusp. So we only are gonna be working with differentiable functions here, and most of the time that's what we're working with. Not every time, but um, just know that these approximations only work for differentiable functions, functions whose derivative exists. So let's look at an example, and actually, oops, before we do that, this is the formal definition of the linear approximation. So it says the linear approximation 2f at a point a is L of x equals blah, blah, blah. Sure, you could memorize that formula, or you could just say, you know what? That's just the equation of the tangent line at a. That is the equation of the tangent line 2f of x at x equals a. That's all we're doing. We were doing that back in chapter three. Um, so we've been doing this for a good long time now. We're just going to be using this tangent line to help us approximate functions. So let's look at an example. Here I would like to, in example 1a, use the linear approximation to f of x equals square root of x. So this is the function I'm trying to approximate at x equals one. So this is the x value that I'm going to build my approximation around. And then once I have that, I'm going to use that to estimate the square root of 1.1 because this is my end goal. I'd really like to get an idea of, well, what's the square root of 1.1? And yes, sure, we could 
plug this into our graphing calculator and but where's the fun in that there's no calculus there so first I need to build the linear approximation to f of x equals square root of x at x equals 1 this is just saying find the equation of the tangent line essentially so I'm gonna start by finding my y value f of 1 that's square root of 1 this is just 1 this is my y value. f of x, I need to maybe think about square root of x as x to the 1 half power so that I can use my general power rule. f prime of x then is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half or 1 over 2 x to the 1 half power. If I plug 1 in there, 1 over 2 times 1 to the 1 half power this is 1 over 2 times 1 gives me 1 half. This is the slope of my tangent line. So I have my x value. I have my y value. I have my slope. I have everything I need to write the equation of the tangent line. So let's go ahead and do that. y minus my y coordinate is 1 equals m. That's 1 half times x minus my x coordinate is 1. So let's see, this is y minus 1 equals 1 half x minus 1 half. Solving for y, this gives me y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. This is my linear approximation. So you could just leave this as y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. If you want to use this notation that we talked about up here, we would call this L of x, which is just a reminder that, hey, this is a linear approximation. We're using this to approximate our function at a certain x value. So, all right, this L of x that I've just found, that is the equation of the tangent line to f of x at x equals 1. What I want to do now is use this linear approximation to estimate the square root of 1.1. And the idea here is that if I want to know what square root of 1.1 is, that 1.1 is relatively close to 1. So if I take 1.1 and plug this into my linear approximation function, I can evaluate this side. This is a whole lot easier to work with than working with the square root function. So I'm going to try to evaluate L of 1.1. L of 1.1 is just 1 half times 1.1 plus 1 half. Maybe we'll write this as 0 0.5 times 1.1 plus 0 0.5, just so that we have everything in decimals. And so let's see, 0 0.5 times 1.1, that should be 0 0.55 plus 0 0.5. So I end up with 1.05. So this is my L of 1.1. And this is my approximation to square root of 1.1. So this is the conclusion that I'm trying to draw at the end of the day. I may not know exactly what square root of 1.1 is, but I know it's probably pretty close to 1.05. If you're unsure, get your graphing calculator out. If I type in square root of 1.1, that is exactly equal to 1.04880848 and it continues on. That's pretty darn close to our approximation of 1.05. The idea here is that this linear function L of X is going to be a whole lot easier to plug in ugly numbers like say 1.1 into than the square root function. If I contrast this with part B, it says use the linear approximation to estimate the value of 0 0.1. Notice here that 0 0.1, relatively speaking, I think 0 0.1 is 
fairly far away from x equals 1. It's not that close. We usually want to be within, say, one decimal place, but the closer the better. If I were to take 0.1 and plug that into my linear approximation function, I would say L of 0.1 is equal to, let's say, 0.5 times 0.1 plus 0.5. So let's see, this is 0.05 plus 0.5. This is 0.55. Now, because this number, 0.1, is not very close to 1, we, let's just check. If I type this in, square root of 0.1, and I would encourage you to do the same at home, 0.1, if I take the square root of that, I end up with 0.31622776. So we'll let's just say uh, 0.3162. This is not all that close to 0.55. You might say, okay, well, it's within two decimal places, but sometimes within two decimal places is, uh, is kind of a big deal. It's within one decimal place, actually. So this is, this is bad. This means that our approximation is not particularly good. And again, that's because 0.1 was pretty far away from one. So all of this is just to emphasize that we need to stick relatively close to our x value if we're going to get a good approximation. The farther away you go from your x value, the less accurate your linear approximation is going to be.